And we're back. So do I have cookie crumbs all over me? <laughs> no. Okay. Let's see how we're doing on this one. Good. Okay, perfect. So, um, moving into that interesting question that we started on last yeah. time about the self. Um, I just, it's, it's always interesting to me when, uh, you know, uh, I don't expect you to do comparative religion, but just to me it's interesting that the, the Hindu way, which the Buddhist way came out of, is focused very much on Atman, the everything is the greater self. Mm -hmm. And the, the Buddhist way, it seems, is diametrically opposed as nothing. There is no self. So, so where do they bring you? Where do if they... self is everything, and if self is nothing, what's the difference? Hmm. I think that the answer stands by on its own right there. That's yeah. well said. That's really the impulse, you know, toward truth. Depending on where you're coming from, what kind of cultural background you have, you're going to find that truth. It may sound different. It may be using different words, different language, no language. But there's going to be something that draws you, that beckons, that says, this path may be steep, but take it. It's going to bring you into your, we may call it true nature, true understanding. Why are you here? Who are you? These questions we ask in Zen. Someone thinks, okay, I'm a person who dot, 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 right? But who are you really? This is a key koan in Zen. You know, who are you? Hmm. So, um, this is all fascinating stuff, and I could ask you 10 questions about what you just said, but um, it's interesting to me, uh, people often try to encapsulate things, maybe I'm doing that right now, in, in a, an easy-to-understand mm -hmm. way, mm -hmm. um, where you can say, okay, what is Zen in three words or something? Reality for dummies. <laughs> oh, I like it. Okay, cool. You know those Great. books? Yeah. Yeah. So is Buddhism this... for dummies. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yes, that's 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 what this series is about. <laughs> but um, the... By the way, hmm. I, I'm not putting anyone down. Hmm. I think it's wonderful to be a dummy. Thank you. <laughs> Before you get involved in all the, you know, theoretical, metaphysical, all this stuff, Mm -hmm. It just kind of weighs you down. For example, you probably know the story of... I'm sorry, I interrupted you. Do you want to it's go okay. on? It's okay, I lost my train of thought anyway. Okay. You go on. Buddhism for dummies. Um, it's great to be a dummy. Great to be a, a fool. Daigu, great fool, is the name in, in Buddhism, in Zen Buddhism. Um, to come with beginner's mind. You know, Shinru Suzuki Roshi, who taught on the West Coast, another pioneer, uh, later than Yogan Senzaki, and started San Francisco Zen Center. Do you know his book? Um, Zen Mind, Beginner's Mind. Yes, yeah. In the beginner's mind, there are many possibilities. In the expert's mind, there are few. So, you know, to be dummy means everything is open. You can explore. Mm. And you don't have any set views. And so, you know, you're not weighed down by all your concepts. So I, I wanted to tell you the story about Tuxan, who is the great, famous Diamond Sutra scholar. And since we've just had a cup of tea, this is an appropriate story. He carried his commentaries wherever he went. And one day, he decided he was going to refute the Zen school. Mm. The Zen school, of course, says, beyond scripture, pointing directly to the human mind, mm. beyond words and letters. Right? So he, carrying his big pack of commentaries, decided he was going to go to the area where Zen teachers were and tell them how wrong-headed they were. And he stopped for a cup of tea and a snack. And the 
refreshment place was being run by, of course, an old woman. This is all the stories, right? Some old woman. Mm. So she said, what's that you're carrying around? And he said, oh, these are my commentaries on the Diamond Sutra. And she said, I understand that in the Diamond Sutra, it says, past mind cannot be grasped. Present mind cannot be grasped. Future mind cannot be grasped. With what mind, then, will you have your tinjin? Tinjin was this word that meant both snack and awakened mind. Mm. Awakening, enlightenment. Mm. So, with what mind will you grasp your snack? Mm. He was stumped. Mm. Then he said to her, could you recommend a Zen teacher around here? <laughs> That's funny. Very funny, right? Mm. So he went to old Utah and she advised him to do that. And after a long night of asking him questions, he said, mm. made for the door. Utah said, it's so late. You better go. He opened the bamboo screen. He turned back. He said, it's pitch black out here. Yutan handed him a lit lantern. And just as he was about to take it, Yutan blew it out. And at that, he was enlightened. Hmm. At that, total darkness. In other words, no more words, no more commentaries. Hmm. And in fact, he did burn his commentaries huh. after that. So, yeah, hmm. this need to grasp and need to identify and need to categorize. Hmm. And then when you are really faced by something dramatic like that, then what? Mm. Then so, he understood the Diamond Sutra. Mm. So um, I, I appreciate what you're saying about um, Zen must be experienced to be understood. Uh, not just Zen, but reality. No, no, take that off. Okay. No, to be understood. Mm. And no Zen. Mm. What is that? That's category two, right? Mm. That's a box, too. Yeah. What is Zen? Take that away. Mm. Then what are you left with? Experience. Mm. Well, that's why they say, taste your life. Mm. Yeah. I, uh, I imagine it's frustrating to Western scientists who need to categorize things when they try to study meditation and you get answers like that. <laughs> this is yeah. why I try to be an intermediary. Uh, that's part of what I'm trying to do. But it's good. What yeah. you're trying to do is good because we need the questions. Mm. The questions are so important. The answers are not important. Mm. Every answer is going to be a dead end for you because you have not come to that experience. Mm. So-called answer is not your experience. So that's why we have the metaphor finger pointing at the moon, mm. full moon of enlightenment. Mm. Only I can simply point finger. Mm. You must see in yourself this full moon. Mm. So um, I, I would like to ask you about enlightenment more, but first, <laughs> uh, off the notes, uh, just based on what you just said and, and what we're talking about, um, it, I think it's important for the scientific community to study meditation. Um, and for them to do that, they need to have categories, not, not necessarily categories, but uh, framework, definitions, mm. things that they can work from. You know what I mean? Because if you just say experience, then they're going to 